Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Piers. Yeah, the Principal Secretary, State Department of Basic Education, Dr. Piro Kipersan, the Chairperson, National Assembly Education Committee, Honorable Julius Mary, the Chairperson, Senate Standing Committee on Education, Senator Joe Nyutu, the Chairperson, Kenya National Examination Council, Professor Julius Nyabundi, the Chief Executive Officer, Teacher Service Commission, Dr. Nancy Macharia, the Chief Executive Officer, Kenya National Examination Council, and also the other CEOs of various state organizations who are here. Madam from uh, Internal Security, who has been with us during the entire period of this exam. The Chairman, uh, Mr. Sioka, who is here. Senior officials of the Ministry of Education, representatives of the unions and associations, next staff, and the members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning once again. When he stood at a podium like this one, 39 years ago, to reach the first set of the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examination research for the 1985 cohort, former Education Minister Peter Ruaringo could not have imagined that the KCP story could last so long. Yet, since 1986, Minister after Minister, Cabinet Secretary after Cabinet Secretary, I will stood here to narrate the success story of the KCP examination. A story that will be told over and over again by many Kenyans, the majority of them products of the 844 education system that has for years served our country immensely well. No one can indeed again say the fact that the 844 education system has produced some of the best brains that have made our country work all, both academically and in the world of work, regionally and globally as well. So as, as I stand before Kenya today, I must make it abundantly clear that my mission is not to sing KCB Digest. Rather, I am here to celebrate and remind my fellow Kenyans that we are only transitioning from a structure of education that has served us well for four decades to one that will serve us even better. I must further emphasize to Kenyans that the midwives of the new shift in the education structure to their competence-based curriculum will mainly be the products of the KCB examination totaling 39 cohorts. Remember that a candidate who started the KCB examination in 1985 at the age of 14 is now aged 53 years old. If this was a teacher, he or she could now be one of our most experienced teachers, likely at the level of the head teacher. At our universities, such a professional could have risen to the level of a full professor. Indeed, this is an apt illustration of the fact that many of us, many of the professionals serving our country at every sphere are indeed products of the KCP examination whose last research I am announcing today. So like uh, with Ro Rengo, Rengo, who released the first KCP examination research, I also feel privileged to be the one at the apex of the transition point from the KCP examination to the Kenya Primary School Examination Assessment, which has been conducted in nine 2023 for only the second year. This story of the end of KCB will not be complete, therefore, if I do not individually mention some of the special groups of people that have been part of the successes, highs, and the rules of the examinations that have often sparked wide celebrations in many parts of the country. Celebrations that we are all but bringing to an end this year. 
The four presidents of Kenya, whose governments steer the implementation of the KCPE, examinations and equip schools successfully to ensure quality products came out of our standard eight national examinations. Two, His Excellent President William Samai Ruto for appointing the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms, whose report has provided a crystal clear roadmap that will guide the transition from 844 to the CPC. Our indefatigable primary school teachers, both in private and the public schools, who have year after year prepared our candidates for the KCPE examinations. Four, field officers from both the Ministry of Education and the Teacher Service Commission who have combed every part of the country for 38 years, checking that the runners are thought well and that quality is up ahead. Five, security agencies from the Ministry of Interior and the National Administration and the means of ICT who annually work to ensure security of the KCP examination. Six, parents who toyed and moved to support the implementation of the primary school system and the 844, even when there were concerns of resource constraints. Seven, the ferment partners who committed their resources to support our country in implementing their school system. The list of all those that I wish to acknowledge for their role in the success of the 844 system in the primary school level is endless. Allow me to therefore thank everyone who in one way or the other was instrumental in the success of our school system. <clears throat> I welcome you to extend your generous support also to the implementation of the CPC system. Allow me to register my appreciation to His Excellency the President Dr. William Ruto for reading the agenda of education in the country and for instructing me to coordinate his work at the sector level. Education impacts on each household at individual levels. It is the backbone of any country's socioeconomic well-being. Our president has made all efforts to ensure that the quality of education is up ahead through various initiatives in the student under his leadership. I also wish to recognize with appreciating the support accorded the Ministry of Education by my counterparts in other government ministries, department, departments and agencies during the field administration of the KCPE and the ongoing KCSC examinations. This multi-agency collaboration is guided by my colleagues, Professor Kitsure Kiniki and the engineer Eliud Waro from the Ministry of Interior and the coordination of national government and IT and digital economy cannot go unnoticed. I'm proud that our country managed to deliver the KCPE examination in the face of the Nino challenges. In some cases, it was difficult to access some of our examination centers that were cut off by the floods. The delivery of examination material to some of the 576 distribution centers countrywide was affected by the evidence. This necessitated, necessitated use of air transport in order to ensure that all candidates accessible start their examinations. I wish to thank all the teachers, field officers, security officers, NEC officers, and other stakeholders who bravely the part with the challenges to conclude the examinations. The fact that the 2023 KCP examination cohort was the last under the 844 system has given the government's 100% transition policy from primary to secondary school level greater in bonders. We are all aware that any candidate who could fail to transfer to Form 1 will not have an opportunity to repeat a class as was the case in the past, following the end of the KCPE examination. Aware of this, the means of education ensured that all runners who were in class 8 sat the 2023 examinations, even in cases where they had not been registered. As a result, 
205 candidates who had not been registered for the KCT examination this year took advantage of the registration waiver which are issued to sit for the examination. They are therefore among those whose results we are releasing today and who had not been registered for the KCP examination this year took advantage of the registration waiver which are issued to sit for the examination. They are therefore among those whose results we are releasing today and they will therefore have an opportunity to inform one next year. To ensure no candidate misses out in joining Form 1 from the final 2023 KCP examination cohort, the Ministry of Education will conduct thorough mapping of any those who may have failed to seek their examination this year in order to administer a special examination in January 2023. The indicative figure we have at the moment so for those who are not able to see the, the examination the is 9,354 candidates and we have uh, given the opportunity uh, to sit for an examination in January so that they can also be able to join Form 1. Therefore, I wish to assure the country that the government has enough capacity to accommodate to all the 1,406,557 1, 1, candidates, candidates who sat their KCB examination in 2023. Therefore, all parents should take advantage of the 100% transition policy to enroll their children in Form 1. I wish to assure the country that we are fully prepared and committed to a seamless transition from the 844 uh, system to the CPC. Many of the issues that were clear in this transition process up to last year have now been solved through the Presidential Working Party on Education Reform report. Currently, we are preparing a session of paper and the necessary draft registration for submission to Parliament for consideration. Once passed, the document will anchor most of the recommendations of the Presidential Working Party report. As per plan, the first cohort of the CPC runners will transition to grade 8 in January 2024. All education indicators show that the cohort is undergoing quality learning and teaching. I wish to assure the country that all curriculum materials are in place to support the runners. One other recommendation that the working party made regarding the funding of public universities and our achievement in institutions. The working party recommended the introduction of the variable scholarship and their own funding model under which students are funded depending on their level of need. I am happy to announce that the rollout of the new funding model has been successful. Already, the higher education loan sport has released the sum of 5.2 billion to first-year students in our various public universities. In a short while, we will be dispersing scholarship amounts to the universities as well as to our Tibetan institutions and the trainees once the necessary processing is completed. We are confident that the new funding model will gradually restore our universities and Tibet institutions to a part of financial security and sustainability, thereby allowing them to focus on their core mandates of education, training and research. Since 1985, a total of 26,067,181 candidates have been examined during the KCP examination. I'm happy to report that the 844 period has recorded an improvement on achieving the gender parity in the education sector. In 1985, the country had a gender parity favoring male at 59.2 percent and the female at 40.8 percent. Encouragingly, from 2013 to 2022, the country achieved near gender parity for male and female candidates. However, in the, 1920, in the 2023 KCP examination, the gender parity slightly shifted in favor 
or male at 51.30 and a female at 48.70. In the 2023 KCP examination, there were 1,406,559 candidates who sat the KCP examination in 28,533 examination centers across the country. Of these, there were 721,544, that is 51.30% male, and there were 685,017, which was 48.70% female candidates who saw the examination. A total of 205 candidates who were not registered were also allowed to sit for the KCB examination, and of this, 125 were male, while eight of them were female candidates. Ten counties had a significant entry of more male than female candidates. These were Mandera County, 62.77%, uh, as compared to 37 0.23%. Garissa County, 61.47%, as compared to 38.53%. Turkana County, with 57%, compared to 43%. Wajia County, 56.91%, compared to 43.09%. Machakos County, 52.79%, compared to 47.21%. Namira County, 52.40%, compared to 47.60%. Uh, Samburu County, 52.39%, compared to 47.61%. Baringo County, 52.13%, compared to 47.87%. Nandi County, 52.05%, compared to 47.95%. And Makueni County, 52.03%, 50, 